Hello friends. In this lecture, we shall be talking about some basic concepts of microcontrollers because these are the brain or the processing power behind any embedded system that we see around us. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you will have good enough understanding of microcontrollers to get started with it. So, let's try to figure out what exactly did. Of course, and the, probably the first thing we need to figure out is what is microcontroller and uh, coincidentally I have a slide here to tell you exactly that and the microcontroller is pretty much the most basic form that I could formulate is an integrated circuit which is also known as the chip which is programmed by a human being to do specific tasks and if you want even more simple definition of microcontroller microcontroller uh, is a essentially a mini computer that's why it is also known as the system on chip so think of your desktop or your laptop or your tablet or any of any of those and think of microcontroller as the entire package of your computer but just on a miniature scale and that's essentially a microcontroller. So microcontroller is a single chip computer or CPU with all peripherals like RAM, ROM, IO devices, timer, ADC etc on the same chip. So everything is fabricated on chip. Microcontroller is uh, mean to be more self-contained and dependent and function as a tiny dedicated computer. Let's try to think about where we find microcontroller and hopefully that uh, uh, will give you a good perspective as the importance of them. So while the refrigerator, Blu-ray player, home theater, TV, microwave, camcorders, cameras, printers, telephones, practically everywhere they are hidden and all these appliances and the devices and when uh, we even don't know that uh, they are in there but you know you name an electronic gadget and there is a good chance that there is a microcontroller inside it. So microcontroller is basically used to control the function, control the function of any devices. Let's say washing machine. So there is a microcontroller which is used to control various functions of washing machine. So microcontroller is an embedded computer chip that controls most of the electronic gadgets and appliances what we use on daily basis from washing machine from mobile to TV right? video player so examples of microcontroller is Motorola's 6811 Intel's 8051 Xerox Z8 PIC 16X family so these are the examples of microcontroller so as you know the microcontroller is a name which is obtained from two words micro and controller the micro um, is a small and controller the thing which controls operations so let's just get into back in the 40s and 50s I think for us to have a better understanding of a microcontroller, we should examine the history a little bit. So we have to go back in earlier days, in 40s, 50s. So we had uh, computers consisting of vacuum tubes and uh, the vacuum tubes have really worked in first generations. Uh, but uh, what were the disadvantage of those computers they produce a ton of heat consume a lot of electricity were very unreliable 
and of course uh, there there was a big maintenance cost so in the first generation computer relied on relied on machine language which is very hard to program deeper and you rectify the errors the machine language is the lowest level programming language which is understood by the computers only so univac eniac computers are the examples of first generations computing devices in second generation the transistor replaced the vacuum tubes with the invention with the advancement in technology transistor were developed and they replaced the vacuum tubes in a second generation of computers the transistor was invented at a bell labs in 1947 but they did not see widespread use in a computer until late 1950s so from 1956 onwards transistor will start were going to be used as a primary component in the computers so there were lots of advantages of a transistor over vacuum tubes which were allowing computers to become smaller faster cheaper more energy efficient and more reliable than the first generation computers in the third generation of computer which started from the 1967 the development of the integrated circuit was the hallmark of the third generation of computers transistor were further miniaturized and placed on silicon chips which are called as semiconductor which had drastically increased the speed and the efficiency of the computer so integrated chips were the milestone of the third generation of the computer so as uh, integrated chips more and more integrated chips ics were developed the size of the computer becomes smaller and that was a period when the development on a microcontroller microprocessor was started so first commercially available microprocessor was the intel 4004 processor and was introduced in 194 1971 the characteristics are it contains some 2300 transistors with 402 800 kilohertz clock speed and it was a 8 bit processor what do you mean by 8 bit processor the intel 4004 was able to process 4 bit of data at a time and um, that time it was developed to be used as a calculator so for that purpose the intel 4004 was developed since then it took phenomenal success in its development and the uses of a microprocessor and microcontroller microprocessor is considered a product of combined development in the field of computer architecture and integrated circuits fabrication it had made the concept of personal computing very feasible later in 1972 intel comes out with the next processor its 8008 processor the char- characteristics were it was a 8 bit processor it means that it can process 8 bit of information at a time which consists of it consists of 3500 transistors in it and it was running on a clock speed of 500 to 800 kilohertz later in 1974 intel again comes up with 8080 processor it was also a 8 bit processor but here the advancement was in the clock speed meantime there was a software engineer gordon moore 
the Gordon Moore observes that the number of transistors per square inch on a computer chip was a doubling every 18 to 24 months. It means that we are increasing the speed and decreasing the size of the computer every 18 to 24 months and that was true. So that this statement is called as a Moore's law and uh, the Gordon Moore he, he published a paper in late 1972 and in that paper he stated that he predicted that by looking at the scenario of the development of the microprocessor he predicted that the number of transistor per square inch on a computer chips will be doubled every 18 to 24 months so that was the Gordon Moore later so what was predicted by the Gordon Moore becomes true in 1974 so Intel again comes up with the other processor 8088, 8080 and 8085. So both were the 8-bit microprocessor but the difference was there is a increase in clock speed. The clock speed is increased to 2 megahertz and it was containing a 6000 transistors. So now uh, when Intel was uh, developing uh, so many microprocessors, another manufacturing company like Motorola also developed their own microcontroller. So Motorola under the company comes out with the MC6 8000 processor. It was also 8-bit general purpose processor. So when we talk about the processor, it's a 8-bit general purpose processor. It requests only a limited voltage supply that is plus 5 voltage and that was its improvement over the 8080. So 8080 was uh, um, consuming not more power supply but uh, when Motorola developed its own processor which is MC6-8000 it required only plus 5 voltage and that time it, it was seen as the great achievement and uh, Intel 8080 was uh, requiring 3 different voltages for its working plus 5 volt, minus 5 volt and plus 12 volt. The Motorola MC6-8000 processor was also a 8-bit processor like 8080 processor and it requires only one single plus 5 voltage. And that's why in 1974 Intel again comes up with another processor which is 80. 85 processor which was the upgraded version of the 8088 so now the 8085 only requires plus 5 voltage for its working and it's also a 8 bit microprocessor so uh, up to here microprocessors were developed and from this period the microcontroller will start developing. So microcontroller is often considered as a byproduct in the development of microprocessor. The fabrication process and the programming technique which are responsible in the development of microprocessor had also led to development of microcontroller. So later Intel also created many significant microcontrollers besides producing world first ever microprocessor. The important one produced by Intel are the 8048 and the 8051 microcontroller. So it was during 1970 and 1971 when Intel was working on inventing the world's first microprocessor, the Gary Boone, 
of a Texas Instruments was working on a quite similar concept and invented a microcontroller. So Boone had designed a single integrated circuit chip that could hold nearly all the essential circuits to form a calculator. So only the display and the keyboard or keypad were not incorporated. So 8031 and 8048 was introduced in 1976 and they were the first Intel's microcontroller. It was used. It was also used in in a keyboard, IBM keyboard. At that time, IBM PC were very prevalent, and in that IBM PC. Those were used as a keyboard controller. Later in 1978, Intel comes up with comes out with the 8086 processor, which was the full 16-bit processor and can process all 16-bit instructions and information at the time. Again, uh, it was containing 29,000 transistors. So in 8085, there were only 6,000 transistors and uh, four years later in 1978, Intel 886 was having 29 transistors, 29,000 transistors. Uh, it clock speeds also increased from uh, 2 kilohertz to 5 to 10 megahertz. Later in 1980, 8051 microcontroller was introduced and it is the one of the most popular microcontroller and it is even used now and is considered to be one of the most long-lived microcontroller. So now we will learn about 8051 microcontroller in our incoming upcoming videos so stay tuned and do, the subs do subscribe this channel.